Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I actually wanted to talk about a really interesting concept that I read about a while ago. So I recent, so about a year ago I read Big Magic, which is this book by Elizabeth Gilbert and she actually created a whole podcast to go along with it. I think it was like two seasons or so. Um, and the podcast was about like people calling in with their creative problems and there were people that were like 60, 70 years old, there were people that were just kind of starting out in their careers and people that had, you know, sometimes, you know, lived a whole life and raised a family and are kind of now in this next part of their life where they want to get back to their creative roots or they want to start painting or writing plays or it's people that have just been holding something off for so long and and as I was skimming through it and as you can tell like there's so many post-its throughout it like I ha absolutely devoured and loved this book when I first read it and I flew through it and just found so much out of it that was really useful and something that I've been thinking about was a mindset that I had been kind of stuck in lately and this mindset doesn't necessarily have to with creativity it's a it's how we think about our everyday lives and that's why I wanted to talk about this concept so what we're talking about today is called the trickster versus the martyr and I find this so fascinating because we all do kind of fall in between these two categories and um, let me just get into explaining what each of these is okay so there's a little passage that I did want to read so it um, in this passage, she's talking about, you know, being delusional and kind of the idea of trust, right? And so many of us struggle with trust, whether it's trusting our coworkers, trusting people around us, trusting, you know, our boyfriend or someone that we're dating and getting to know. Trust plays a role in every part of our lives. And so that's why I kind of wanted to start here, because again, like the premise of this book is creativity, but this entire mindset is something that honestly relates to all of us in our everyday lives and I really want you to think about like honestly are you the trickster or are you, are you the martyr and when it comes to trust I wanted to read you this passage so it says but is it so is trust any more delusional than believing that only your suffering and only your pain are authentic or that you are alone that you have no relationship whatsoever with the universe that created you or that you have been singled out by destiny especially cursed or that your talents were given to you for the mere purpose of destroying you what i'm saying is this if you are going to live your life based on delusions and you are because we all do then why not at least suggest a delusion that's helpful allow me to suggest one the work wants to be made and it wants to be made through you we're all we all have these kind of fake thoughts and these limiting beliefs and these ideas about ourselves that we're carrying around all the time. And whether that idea started with you or started with another person or started with a traumatic experience or racism or bullying, whatever those thoughts are that are going through your head, you're still choosing to believe them every day. And this is honestly how I feel about affirmations and confronting your limiting beliefs. It's like you're already going to be living your life based on these thoughts that you haven't really put much effort into. They just kind of happened, right? So you're allowing yourself to be controlled by these thoughts that you didn't intentionally create. And a lot of those thoughts and a lot of those ideas are completely unhelpful. Like they're not getting you further in life. They're not benefiting you. All they're doing is holding you back. So if you're allowing yourself to sit there and do nothing, you're allowing all of these chaotic thoughts and all of these subconscious limiting beliefs to basically dictate your day-to-day -day life. And you're allowing kind of the unknown to rule you. And you wouldn't like go on a backpacking trip in the middle of nowhere alone with like a backpack of things and you had no idea what's in there, right? Like you want to pack like an amazing survival bag. You want to make sure you have a tent, you have water, you have food. You want to make sure that you have all these things that are essential to you getting through successfully and surviving, right? So when it comes to life, are you going to, you know, just pack your bag with the first five things you see? It doesn't matter what it is. There's no thought in it and just set off into the rest of your life. No, you want to be intentional and you want to know what's creating those thoughts, what's creating those beliefs, and what is going to get you through to the next step of your life and the next 
you know, the next kind of plateau. And that's what she's saying. She's saying that, you know, it might be delusional and other people might think you're crazy for allowing yourself to think that you can be financially free if you're currently in debt. But are you going to sit there and go through life and just say, oh, well, I'm de in debt now, so I'm in debt forever. My entire financial future is in the toilet. There's nothing I can do about it. Or are you going to say, okay, this kind of sucks, but I know that there's this next level that I can get to. I know that there's this idea that I want to bring into my life, and I know that I believe that I can get there by making these steps and doing these things that are going to get me there. And the first step is believing that it's even possible, and it's accepting where you are in life, right? Trust, belief, and acceptance. So breaking it down even more, what is a martyr and what is a trickster, right? So a martyr, so a martyr is dark. It's very macho. It's very, you know, I'm going to do this because I have to do this. It's about being fundamentalist and being very rigid. It's sticking to this is how things are, so this is how I'm going to have to do them. I can't break the norm. I can't, you know, do something on my own. I can't branch out because this is how things are, and I have to stay in that kind of societal box. Um, you know, it's about sacrifice. It's about thinking that life is a battle or life is a war. Feeling like you must suffer in order to get something done and that there's no easy way out. And the trickster, on the other hand, is light. It's sly. It's kind of finding its own little way to make things happen. It's all about finding loopholes and saying, you know what, this is how it is, but that doesn't mean that's how it has to be for me. I can still find a way to get things done. It's about the idea that life can suck, but you're still going to find a way out and you're going to find a way that's still sticking to your goals, sticking to your dreams, sticking to the core of who you are. You don't have to sacrifice everything for this norm around you. And that's kind of the idea of the trickster, right? And something that she says that's really interesting is that, you know, the idea of being a trickster has been around forever and that creativity and its most original forms like we're thinking you know hieroglyphics etched into cave dwellings like creativity in its most basic most human form you know gilbert writes that that must have been created by you know someone that had this trickster mentality because there's no purpose to art right you don't have to have music to survive you don't have to have etchings in the wall or hieroglyphics that mean something to survive but these people did it anyway, and it's kind of making light out of a situation. It's making the best out of something that you're given. And so the idea of creativity is to make the mundane interesting. And so she says, you know, that's completely out of the trickster energy and the trickster mindset. You know, we can apply that to our lives because we all have these circumstances that are holding us back or these mundane things that we have to do in life, like go to work and get you know, get paychecks and, you know, pick the kids up from school or, or, you know, whatever it is that you have to do. We all have these kind of daily battles and these kind of mundane things. And you can look at it like a trap or you can look at it like just the basic things that you have to do, but it's not going to take away your personality or your identity. It's not going to take away the core of who you are because you can find ways to make the mundane more interesting by being more of a trickster. This is going back to the idea that I just mentioned, you know, trust, belief, and acceptance. You need to accept where you are. If you're sitting here saying, I can't believe I have to spend an hour in traffic every morning. I can't believe that I have to go to work every day. I can't believe I rely on a paycheck. I can't believe I have to pay rent. I can't believe how expensive rent is. I can't, and you know, some of these ideas are valid. You know, we've all had these thoughts. I'm not saying that you're bad for thinking this way or anything like that, but you can create such a nightmare out of these basic things. And it's like we all go to work, but you know, you have that one coworker that's always so excited to be there and is just so happy and is so understanding and friendly and it genuinely makes it better, right? They don't have to be that way. They are still getting the same paycheck at the end of the week, whether they're happy or miserable, but you can find ways to make life less miserable by adopting this trickster energy and that's not going to happen if you are sitting here fighting your circumstances you need to accept the basics of what your life is and what you're looking what your life is looking like so that you can say okay how can i make the best of this situation but if you're still in denial you're not going to make the best of it because you're not even allowing yourself to see that that exists and that that is your reality Okay, so this is a little bit of a longer passage, so stick with me. Um, but it says, The trickster is obviously a charming and sub uh, subversive figure. But for me, the most wonderful thing about a good trickster is that he trusts. 
It may seem counterintuitive to suggest this because he can seem so slippery and shady, but the trickster is full of trust. He trusts himself, obviously. He trusts his own cunning, his own right to be there, his own ability to land on his feet in any situation. To a certain extent, of course, he also trusts other people, in that he trusts them to be marks for his shrewdness. But mostly, the trickster trusts the universe. He trusts in its chaotic, lawless, ever-fascinating ways, and for this reason, he does not suffer from undue anxiety. He trusts that the universe is in constant play, and specifically, that it wants to play with him. And that's what I think is so beautiful and so important about this idea of trust, and it's possible to do, to be trusting in a lighthearted mindset. And I think that that's something that we miss out so much in society. You know, we, we find it hard to trust our partners, we find it hard to trust our best friends, and there's so many so many of us that have been burned by these relationships in our life and it's i mean i feel like a significant amount of millennials say that they have trust issues right like we've all been through something traumatic or had someone betray us and it's nothing new but at the same time it's like you don't have to make trust this serious thing where you're you know giving up your whole self like you can maintain the core of who you are while trusting the universe and trusting other people and that's the thing i think it's better to look at it from this larger picture of trusting the universe and trusting the purpose of your life rather than putting all your trust in say a person like if you're in a relationship or if you're newly in a relationship you could either trust that that person is never going to betray you trust that you know that person is everything in your life and that you know you can place all of your trust in that person or you could look at it like you know obviously i do trust this person and, and they've given me reasons to trust them but i also trust the universe i trust that there's a reason that this person is in my life and i trust that there is something that i can learn from this and that makes it so that even if you do break up or something you're not looking at trust as this bad thing because you trusted that person and now you're no longer with them you're looking at the universe and how you were able to trust it and it gave you this great relationship that you learned so much from and then it gave you all this knowledge and all this experience that you can take to your next relationship and it taught you what you need to know about trust because maybe that person didn't ever betray you but you just broke up you just separated and that's what's so beautiful about looking at trust at this grand scale you know and the other important thing that she mentioned is that the trickster trusts himself and you have to trust yourself and the the biggest takeaway from that is the idea of worthiness, right? What she says specifically is he trusts himself, obviously. He trusts his own cunning, his own right to be here, his own ability to land on his feet in any situation. And the important part, the second important part of that is that he trusts on in his ability. Right? Like if you're putting all your trust and faith in this future idea and something comes along and diverts those plans, then you can't then you feel like you're completely hopeless and you feel like, you know, you've you've been wronged or, you know, something that you were owed isn't going to pan out. Anything. I'm just saying that if you put all of your trust in the idea that your life is going to turn out like X and then it doesn't turn out that way, that doesn't do anything for you. That's not a real practice of trust. You have to trust not in an idea that's an abstract concept but you have to trust in your ability to be okay and your ability to handle every situation with grace and with patience but you also have to trust that you're going to be okay and you're going to find a way out and you're going to make your goals happen no matter what gets thrown your way if the universe throws a wrench in your plans are you going to say well i'm not going to be x so i just need to give up or are you going to say you know i I trust in my own ability enough to still get to my end goal, but I just have to, you know, go in kind of a zigzag to get there. And that's the most important part is like the idea of having to accept your surroundings, accept your circumstances, but then trust in this bigger idea and trust in your own abilities. And, you know, on this kind of idea of self-worthiness, you know, the, the trickster obviously has to believe that he is good enough to be there and that he deserves a role at the table. And you, you need to believe that too, you know, no matter how many circumstances or setbacks you have in your life, if you finally get to that end goal, there's no point in getting there and then being shy about it or getting there and then not doing anything with that power and that that platform that you've earned you need to use it to benefit what's going on around you and you know kind of this greater 
plan and you can only do that if you believe in your own worthiness like you have to believe that you have something to say and that your own ability is your own presence is worthy of something without having to be productive because again if you're placing all of your trust in this idea of your future self you're saying oh i'll be worthy when and that's what you need to stay away from you're worthy now and you need to believe in yourself now and just because you have goals doesn't mean that you'll only be worthy when you reach those goals you're worthy now but you're just a person that's worthy that's working on these goals because they want to and i think that that takes away a lot of the pressure that we put on ourselves with creativity with entrepreneurship with businesses with just wanting to get to a certain point in our career or wanting to start a family we have all these pressures and all this external pressure but i think the most significant of those pressures is the internal pressure of your own mind telling you i'm not good enough until i have this and that's kind of that core wound that you need to address and you need to make yourself feel like you are worthy now because the thing is worthiness is not your production and it's not your achievements right worthiness is just inherent and slowly life and all these circumstances that we're dealt with kind of beats it out out of us as we go on but it is our human right and our duty to to ingrain that worthiness in ourselves and to keep up that idea of worthiness because the thing is you can get a seat at the table and you can have it all laid out in front of you but if you feel like your opinion once you're at that table doesn't mean anything or isn't going to carry any weight then there's no point in you even being there right you have to believe in that core idea of who you are and you have to be able to separate your circumstances and your production and your achievements from your idea of worthiness because again worthiness is inherent and that's all you need to know about it so if you are an artist or you are a creative or you do have a small business or whatever your kind of passion project is in life think of it as an art think of it as a skill that you develop and you cultivate and you know you can look at reports and see you know a dip in your stock or a dip in your revenue that month or a dip in your followers that month and still feel inherently worthy and you can look at that as a challenge that you can kind of figure out what you need to do figure out why your posts weren't working or figure out you know what what you did wrong in terms of sales that month and just kind of deal with it rationally and deal with it in a way of looking at the realistic idea of it accepting it and then trusting that you know how to get that you know stock back up or you know how to get your followers back up whereas if you put all this internal pressure on yourself and you say i'm only worthy if i have a hundred thousand followers and you get there and then you dip back up down to ninety eight thousand followers or something that shouldn't take so much on a toll so much of a toll on yourself that you feel like you're not worthy anymore or you feel like you have nothing to say anymore because you took a dip you can look at that circumstance realistically and accept where you are and find a loophole and be a trickster about it or you can look at it in the martyr perspective which is you know my my circumstances are terrible this means something about me life is suffering i can't do this and achieve this goal without a lot of pain i'm going to be upset no matter what i need to suffer for my art i can't be happy and be successful all these stupid stupid ideas that we tell ourselves get into our minds and and when you are able to separate yourself from your art and your creativity and you're able to say i'm worthy no matter what i'm worthy if i stop painting or i stop making youtube videos or i stop reading books or writing books i'm worthy if i stop doing that but i love it so much that i'm going to use that to make my life less mundane i'm going to use that art as a celebration of who i am i'm going to use that to lift up my voice and create something beautiful that other people can enjoy and you know it's it's two completely different ways of looking at the same circumstance and that's what i want you to take away from this video you know think about am i being a martyr am i you know saying things that have to be hard for no reason or am i being a trickster and am i making the best out of this terrible situation and still getting what 
I want out of it. It's looking at your reality, accepting where it is, and finding the kind of loophole and pathway and balance that you need to make it all happen instead of feeling like you're just flogging yourself every single day with your circumstances and your mundane life and the crappy responsibilities that you have to deal with, you know? Um, so look at it like a celebration and find that trickster energy within yourself. And if you are... Um, curious or you want to read more about it you know this book is amazing i highly recommend it i'm sure you could get it at your library um or online um and it definitely has an audiobook version and if you are just looking for something for free check out her podcast big magic um it stopped a few years ago but it was amazing i would definitely listen to it again um i highly recommend it so i really hope that this video was helpful and that you enjoyed it i want to create more videos on these kinds of um topics that i find that i feel like can really expand and encompass huge parts of our lives so let me know if you have any qu questions or comments down in the comments below and otherwise i love you all happy healing